Hello, this is Watch It All About with another watch review, and in this review we're looking at a, a Lepista, uh, which is quite an unusual name, and their model, the Oryx, in particular the L21. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, it's come in the box. I thought it would be worth just showing you the unboxing process, because it is a nice box that it comes in. Uh, so we have this quite large box. You'll notice with this watch, everything is quite uh, racing-inspired, so this is quite a... Um, a soft feel that you probably get in the interior of a car. Uh, quite a nice unusual shape with the shiny end. So then we open it up and the watch is inside. So we can take the watch out. But this also comes out as well, which is quite unusual. Uh, and we have a little section underneath for our warranty card, our book manual and a, uh, a little uh, uh, cleaning cloth as well so that's nice uh, so I just thought it was worth just showing you uh, the unboxing process just because it's a uh, uh, it's nice uh, it's nice when you receive uh, watches uh, where they you know manufacturers where they've put a little bit extra into the, uh, the, the the boxing and packaging so that's good okay let's just move that to one side now <clears throat> so the uh, Lepista Oryx is uh, valued at $595 or £400. Pounds. Uh, I mean, yes, it is quite a lot of money, um, but uh, you do get, as you can see, an absolutely gigantic, hefty, very well-made watch. Um, and we'll look, it into, look into it in a little uh, more detail in this video, obviously. Um, so first of all, the size, it is big. Measures 48 mil uh, in diameter, which obviously... Uh, is bigger than your usual watch. I'll just put it on and show you what it looks like on my seven and a half inch wrist. So there we go. Uh, it's pretty tall as well as you can see, um, but thankfully the lugs are pretty dumpy, so uh, uh, so the uh, the lug to lug length isn't that much greater than than the forty eight mil diameter. Um, it's obviously very hard to get it under a, a cuff because of the the height. Um, that's a, something that comes with nice big heavy watches. But if, if this is your kind of style, then you can you will expect that and uh, we'll be able to uh, appreciate that problem anyway. So let's uh, think about uh, some of the key features of it. Uh, this, as I mentioned before, is very uh, racing inspired uh, and there are a number of uh, features that support this. So first of all, the bezel uh, is based on a brake disc, brake disc. Uh, with these little holes and uh, screws uh, and uh, the side and the way it's brushed uh, and uh, made of stainless steel. The dial, as you can see, has a nice texture to it. That's mimicking uh, a checkered flag for you know final uh, lap or, or completion of the race. So that's a nice little touch. Uh, the hands uh, supposedly mimic um, track start lights, you know, when they have four, four or so lights in a row. Uh, so there we go. The subdials, uh, they're mimicking uh, the dashboard dials you'd find on a sports car. Uh, the strap, uh, where it has a, a double red stitch in, that mimics uh, the like the, the sports car seats uh, because a lot of them have uh, contrasting st stitching around the edge. In. And then finally, the the IP uh, coated the the plated. Uh, case mimics uh, uh, a gear stick uh, or the, the gear knob itself. So there is a number of things which is nice to see. They've obviously put a lot of thought into the design. Um, I really do like the design as well. Um, I don't think it's too uh, brash. Although the watch is big, I think the, the design is, is you know kept reasonably subtle, which is good because if you had uh, a, a crazy dial, uh, crazier than this one, then it would probably uh, end up being a bit too uh, too much. Um, so let's think about some more um, specs. Uh, the movement is a, a quartz chronograph, so a touch top pusher to uh, to start it. It's a Miyota OS20 uh, quartz. Uh, so we have a 24-hour indicator here. This is your running seconds. That's your 60-minute uh, uh, stopwatch. Uh, counter and this big second hand is the uh, 
chronograph seconds, so I'll stop it and then reset it like so. Um, whilst we're on the movement, you know, it's a very reliable, uh, solid movement, so it's, it's highly unlikely to go uh, to go wrong. So, you know, it's, it's a fairly good good choice there. Uh, the crystal is actually a mineral crystal with a sapphire coating. And I have seen this on a number of uh, uh, watches before. Uh, basically, the reason behind this is that uh, the, the manufacturers believe this offers the, the best of both worlds. So it has the scratch resistance of the sapphire coating, but then it also has the shatter resistance of the mineral crystal. Uh, it is very thick, so you tap it and it gives you a really big thud. You can usually tell by tapping it if it's if it like it gives it a bit of a chinky sound, then you know it's quite light, uh, quite thin. And as you can see, it's ever so slightly domed as well. Uh, one nice touch is that the numbers 12, 3, 6 and 9 are actually printed on the underside of the of the crystal rather than on the dial. As you can see, they're sort of floating and it gives a, a, a sense of a, a Chopard almost because um, I forget what model Chopard has it, but um, they've famously made, you know, made these floating numbers quite famous. Um, so that's pretty much everything for the, the specs. Let's uh, have a think about uh, how, how well it's made. So the case, <coughs> uh, as you can see, is large. It is very large. Um, it has this IP coating as well. Um, it does seem to be very well machined. Um, nice and matte finish to it. Um, everything's put together very well. Uh, I do like um, the... Uh, the pushes and these uh, like rings around them to mimic the uh, the grip of the uh, the crown. The crown is absolutely massive as well. I think this actually measures ten mil, so it's just the the crown itself is a centimeter, which is massive. Uh, it's a screwing crown. Uh, it feels really really solid. Um, let me pull it out to obviously change the dates. There we go. Um, and it has the the Pizta logo uh, on the end. Uh, and the grip is excellent as well. Uh, and I do like the way it's just a, a thin bit of grip as well. Uh, these crown guards are very big and chunky as well to protect it. Uh, one thing is that is worth noting is how it always perfectly lines up, which is excellent. Um, a lot of manufacturers really struggle to, to do this. I find on Steinhardt's and Christopher Ward's, they never manage to get this just right, but it's, I'm really pleased to see it. Uh, lined up on the Lepista. Uh, pushes actually are polished as you can see so it gives a, a little bit of a, uh, a contrast between the, the matte IP rated, uh, IP uh, coated uh, case uh, so that's that's pretty nice as well. Um, moving on to the case back so we have a polished center with a some nice uh, laser etching there with some details uh, of the uh, the watch. <coughs> uh, the surround is brushed as well, and it's a screwing uh, case back. Uh, so the even, although we have a screwing case back and a screwing crown, it's only actually rated to 100 meters uh, water resistance, which is perfectly fine for uh, submerging it for for like a, a swim in a swimming pool maybe. Uh, but you can't really go uh, scuba diving or anything with it. But it's not really aimed at uh, being used in the water. It's a, it's a full-on racing watch. So in that regard, I suppose they thought there's no point in trying to uh, go any deeper. Okay, so uh, that's all very nicely done. As you can see, it's pretty spotless and uh, it's quite attractive as well in its design, which is good. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the dial. It's quite hard to, um, to show fully. I'll get the macro lens on uh, in a in a short while but you can uh, see there that the uh, let's get it in focus there we go so you can see that, that it is very uh, delicate and uh, uh, there is a lot going on it's uh, three layered uh, personally I really love uh, textured dials like this one almost reminds me sort of like a, a Audemars Piguet um, Royal Oak off offshore kind of thing with the with these squares, uh, and I I personally really really like it. I think the uh, execution of it is is absolutely perfect as well. 
um, and it's just uh, it's just really well made and uh, uh, and, uh, and very good. I, I really like it, especially the like the, the splashing of red with the um, this uh, like chapter ring. Um, so uh, I think the design is is good and and it's made very well. Um, I mean, you can you can see it all there. Really, it's, it's not a lot to um, to explain. So there we go. Uh, the hands. Uh, these white sections are actually loomed, so the tips of the minute and second hand, uh, and also the uh, the running sec uh, the the chronograph second hand. The loom isn't that strong. Uh, you have to charge it for a good while to get any uh, charge on it, and even then, it's it's not the brightest. Um, but I I don't suppose that racing watches are particularly well known for their outstanding loom that's mainly for divers okay so uh, the strap uh, is a uh, nice uh, calf leather uh, very high quality you can tell uh, that it's decent by the uh, uh, the feel of it and I do like the the double stitching as well uh, which is very accurate and, and decent uh, decent quality stitching uh, it's a uh, here we go, it's double layered, so we have a, a nice red underneath as well. Uh, and I do like the uh, the Lapiz to logo uh, stamped uh, on either side, so that's pretty cool. Um, moving on to the, the buckle, it's uh, also IP uh, coated, just like the case. Lapiz to is nicely, uh, uh, nice and deeply engraved on, on the end there, uh, and it's a, it's a decent chunky size to uh, to match the uh, match the rest of the watch uh, it's very easy to use very easy to um, to put on and take off uh, and I do uh, like it when it has a nice big thick uh, tang like that so that's good um, one thing I did forget to highlight actually was this uh, Lapista deep engraving on the side which is uh, uh, nicely done as well Okay, so let me get the uh, macro lens on and we will have a look at it in closer detail. Right, so let's start with the dial then. So first of all, let's just get that running. First of all, let's look at this uh, uh, checkered flag texture. As you can see, each square is is absolutely perfect, really. Uh, I'm really surprised with how good the, uh, even though it's so complex and technical, uh, I'm really surprised and impressed with how well the uh, uh, the, the dial has been made. Uh, even though there's a variety of layers uh, and and textures, it's all uh, made perfectly, which is great to see. Some people may complain about uh, having a white date window, but it doesn't bother me at all. Here's the hands. There we go. And then we have the the numbers as well. Again, the printing is spot on. Let's just have a look at the the logo. If I just move the the minute hand. There we go. So the printing of the logo is, is pretty uh, accurate as well. There we go. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the uh, bezel. One second. Right. Try and get this in. 
a bit bright here, sorry. There we go. So there we go. It's all nicely uh, drilled out and machined and the screws are nicely done. We have this uh, feature around the edge as well, which is a good touch. And then moving on to the case itself. So we have the Pizza on one side, deeply etched. And then the other side we have Pushers. And then there's the uh, the the crown. If I just unscrew it now. It's quite a long thread. You're unscrewing for quite a while. You can see the thread there is decent. Big thick crown guard there. There we go, just screw that back in. Okay, so let's move on to the case back. I'll just give that a wipe. I do like the uh, the like the matte finish to the majority of the center and then everything else is uh, polished which is a nice uh, variety of finishing there and quite difficult i believe as well to do you can see the etching is very deep as well which is good then we just have the push to finish there. So finally, just looking at the strap then, here's the Lapiz logo stamped on the underside. Here's the stitching and the, the leather on the top. And then finally, if we look at the the buckle, there's the the end, which is deeply uh, deeply engraved. I do like the uh, the use of hex uh, screws as well a lot of the time. There we go. So uh, the uh, the use of hex screws obviously is. Uh, mimicking uh, racing as well so we have come on let's get focus now hex screws all around here hex screws here and then use there as well and there so so yeah uh 400 pounds it is a it is a obviously a lot of money um but i do think you get one hell of a watch for that price uh, there's a lot of thought and effort uh, that's been put into it. We saw with the uh, the packaging as well. Uh, you do get a nice uh, full uh, full package uh, of uh, a decent watch and uh, uh, decent everything else, papers and boxes, etc. So uh, you do uh, you do get a lot for your money. Uh, it's uh, it's up to you whether the style is uh, is for you because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. It is quite a uh, uh, a unique watch. Um, it may not be to everyone's taste uh, because of its size and because of its style. Uh, but if you do like it, then I, I would highly recommend it because I personally have really enjoyed uh, wearing it. I think it looks great on it. It gives you a lot of wrist presence. Um, and uh, I, I really like the, um, uh, uh, the, the quality of the dial, uh, especially uh, that really... Uh, uh, calls out to me personally so if uh, if you can see yourself uh, wearing one of these watches and want to pull the trigger then yeah i would i definitely uh, recommend to do so okay so uh, this was the lapista oryx and this is what she's all about <laughs>